Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. Be sure to check out our podcast because we have terrific content every week uploaded there, great conversations, so don't miss it on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever else. It's called the B-Ball Breakdown Podcast, so head over there and download it. Well, now let's also talk about premium content that's coming up very soon. This week, we're going to be launching a whole side where for a low monthly fee, you'll get access to a library of videos exclusive only there, and that library will continue to grow every week for the same low price. So stay tuned for that coming up very soon. Cannot wait. So now let's talk about Joel Embiid because the process that Sam Hinkie installed a few years ago in the Sixers wasn't allowed to continue to full fruition. But what we are now seeing out of Joel Embiid is a beginning of a monster out there on the court being able to move very fluidly for a very tall seven footer with long arms plus a lot of skill from the shooting perspective and also from touch at the rim very impressive and then the defensive end as well so i want to share with you some of my insights into the process now as it stands and what might happen in a few years once all these players mature and develop and get healthy let's start out by looking at Embiid in the pick and roll they aren't running too many for him yet, but you can see that finishing high at the rim will not be a problem. He's not only mobile, but strong as an ox, and you can use the roll to knock guys out of the way in a route to the rim. However, he still needs to learn how to control all that strength to avoid getting into foul trouble, which is a major concern for the rookie. He does have a good sense of moving without the basketball, and with passers like Rodriguez and Saric out there, he should get lots of opportunities like this. As it is right now, the Sixers are struggling to smoothly execute their offense, as you can see cutters going to the wrong spot and throwing off the spacing and timing. MB does waste too much time after catching the ball, negating his lateral quickness by letting the defense catch up to him. He does prefer to turn over his right shoulder and release a high right-handed shot, next level ability that needs time to polish. Part of that polish means understanding that facing up to the hoop needs to be a pivot to create more space. Here, he does a left foot turn, allowing the defender to stay right in his grill, although he draws the shooting foul. Gortat is one of the strongest centers in the league, and he has success keeping Embiid farther from the hoop. Watch how this left foot turn allows Gortat to stay right in his face, forcing Embiid to actually step back before taking a bad contested mid-range shot. Here's a better example of a left foot pivot to get more space when facing up. Nothing fancy for him in the post, and he's quick enough to clean up his missed shots if you fall asleep on the box out. He is so strong and aggressive down there that I suspect he'll get the typical rookie treatment from the refs and get this type of push-off called on him until he learns to stop doing it. You can get a glimpse into the total package as his long arms bother this shot by Gortat, then his speed down the court forces a mismatch down low. Hopefully, the Sixers get better at recognizing this kind of position, but Embiid simply cannot get upset and react. There's always another chance, and in fact, he gets it against Morris down low, does a nice job pivoting the face up, but takes an extra dribble and disrupts his rhythm on the fadeaway. But even with Gortat's strength, he was able to command deep low post position, and he bowls his way to the middle and finishes this tough shot with the right hand over his right shoulder, advanced level skills. The Sixers had zero problems looking for him in the post early and often, and he uses the pivot to face up, nice jab step to attack, but Gortat is smart and knows how to lean on him. However, this is just a total display of talent, making a Wilt Chamberlain finger roll with contact over a seven footer. Wow. Again, he's very good at using his speed to beat his man down the floor to that low block. That said, I'd like to see him attack off the catch and not rely on a fadeaway when he was that close to the hoop to begin with. MB definitely seems to have fallen in love with the face-up game, and while this isn't a bad shot, with his quickness and strength, it feels like he should limit these types of jumpers. For instance, when going against Tyler Zeller, he faces up but then uses a nice dribble spin move to unleash this gorgeous fadeaway from 8 feet. There are spots I like to fade away from him, but only if he puts it on the ground to eat up space beforehand. If he just puts it up from a stationary dribble, it'll take a while before we see success. 
One area of concern besides the fouls is his propensity for getting stripped of the ball. He brings it down where the guard's hands are a bit too often, and we can't ignore how many times this happened in limited minutes of the preseason. He just needs to learn not to expose the ball so much, keeping it protected and moving when he goes into his attack. Also, he needs to avoid poor footwork that can get him off balance under pressure and lead to more stripping. While I cannot wait to see him attack from the high post, he'll need to read the floor spacing a bit better to avoid having little guards slap his dribble away. Now let's look at his shooting, which is a frightening proposition for teams if he can consistently trail the play into a wide open three at the top of the key. His jump shot looks good, from his feet to his rhythm, so I'm having a hard time imagining he'll shoot below 34% from out there. And while a guy his size can do a lot of damage near the rim, it will help loosen things up if he can flash to the outside from time to time, displaying a nice jab step game that generates a wide open jumper. And check out the hop on this shot. You rarely see big men use it. However, this one became a two motion shot as his arms got to the set position before his legs began straightening into the jump. Just a slight adjustment will improve his rhythm and no doubt his percentage. In theory, he can work on the floor with Okafor as a pick and popper, and watch how he gets a nice turn to allow his right hip and elbow to align with the rim, and his feet flow forward in a gentle sway to allow the body to stay relaxed and add more arc. And if he pops and forces a big closeout, he resembles a wingman with his ability to shot fake and put the ball down on the floor. On the defensive end, I really like his activity. He is aware of cutters and helping out like a good big man should. Plus, you can see him communicating to his teammates. Another huge plus from such a young player. He bumps down on the roll man and his wingspan is so long that getting his arms up on a contest like this does a lot to help it miss. What I don't like is how long it takes him to recover after he tried to leak out. This is a perfect opportunity to swoop in and patrol the paint had he gotten there a second earlier. He's got a good sense of seeing man and ball and watch this hedge on the point guard completely stymieing the pick and roll. And then watch his lateral movement as he recovers. This is from a big 7 footer mind you, but he doesn't finish the play. A poor closeout leads to a give up of 2 points. The only adjustment he'll need to make is where to contain against certain players. He's quick enough to be a step higher, which would have gotten him to the contest of Horford shot a step sooner. In the pick and roll, he's going to be a real threat to the offense with his mobility. He can hang back and even though Kyrie faked him out, he kept his hand up and contested this into a miss. On this ice defense, with LeBron on the ball, he'll just need to tweak this one more step back, which would allow him to get to the pass or at the very least contest this shot. But here's something you can't really teach, hanging back in the lane as the guard attacks and then go after it when it's already in the air to force the miss. These are the glimpses into his terrifying talent. I'd like to see a tad bit more effort consistently. He got away with giving up an open three, but if you're going to stay back, you better be in the lane for the rebound. And here's a better example of staying back, giving the point guard the shot, but then finding his man and getting a body on him before corralling the ball. This pick and roll scared me as he was doing okay with his positioning, but watch how he hyper extends his right knee and grimaces in pain afterwards. This seems to have gone away, but I... In the long run, the Sixers could very well suffer from MB sinking too far back and giving the guard wide open shots from 16 feet on in. And if you're wondering what kind of rim protector he can be, I offer you these four blocks as evidence of incredible lateral movement and quickness, explosive jumping, and long arms that can make plays that demoralize the other team. So there you have it sports fans, this is the beginning of something special for the Philadelphia 76ers. And I'm sure once they start winning again, the fans and the league will forget all about the three years in the wilderness as players like Dario Saric, Ben Simmons, and Joel Embiid will lead this team back to the top of the Eastern Conference.